What's up? It's your girl, the Pivot Strategist, with another video. Today is just a little bit different. <laughs> oh, snap. Hold on. All right, all right, all right. I'm back. So today's Tuesday. And I typically like to say, hey, Tuesdays are where we're just going to tell our stories. I'm not going to be the only one to tell, you know, parts of my stories. I want to have this as a space where we're all invited to tell our stories. All right. So, you know, just a part of telling my stories. I'm like super excited because my dunks came in the mail. <laughs> so we're going to kind of tell my story. Well, some of my story while unboxing my new dunks. I just can't wait for y'all to see it. Okay, so I'm often reminded about how, you know, a, a lot of people can say, oh, you know, you, Olivia, like you really love like school. You're really smart. Like, you know, my previous, you know, I'm an educator at heart, you know, a reading teacher. And so, you know, I, one day I was like riding in the car and I started to think about something that was uh, said to me when I was in high school. And had I let that idea or that someone pushing their biases or how they personally felt on me, had I have let that affect me, I don't think that I would be where I am today. And so... I went to a high school that I guess you can consider it diverse, but, you know, in my personal opinion, there were more, you know, uh, Caucasian, you know, kids uh, than there were black kids. And so I grew up in a town where it is heavily, um, you know, filled with now it's a little bit different because we see a lot more minorities, but that's not a lot of what I saw. The town that I live in can be kind of considered racist, I guess, in a sense, or has like a racist like history, like, you know, history that is based out of racism, you know, through the wars and, and everything else. So my high school, I kind of felt like my high school experience, and this is just my high school experience, and I'm not talking about friends. I'm talking about the leaders, the teachers, uh, you know, of the school. And so we had a school counselor that, <laughs> um, I'm not going to say that I had like an issue with her because I really didn't have a problem with her. But um, I will say that like in high school, I pretty much, I struggled in high school and it wasn't like academically because I, you know, I will say it now. I'm really smart. I think that everybody's smart. I think that everybody has their process to learning and it may look a little bit different for it, for each person. So anyway, um, I didn't struggle academically, but I struggled with my identity and where I belonged. So, you know, I didn't know if I fit in with this crowd or if I fit in with the other crowd. Like I just, I felt like I did not have a place to belong. So, you know, I started to act out, start to make, you know, decisions that weren't really that smart, you know? And so that, that was, that was my thing. Right. And so, um, where was I in the story? And so anyway, um, when we got to like, maybe I, I feel like it was like my 10th or my 11th grade year when, you know, we, we kind of planned to have like these, um, I like all of this dust. I feel like I have so much dust like in my room, but whatever. Um, this is raw and unfiltered guys. <laughs> but anyway, we would have like these like talks, like quarterly talks with our counselor. Like, what do you want to do with yourself? Like, are you on track for graduation? Whatever, whatever. This one particular time I went in with my counselor and, um, you know, I just wasn't sure. He, you know, I was already struggling with my identity. I just wasn't sure, you know, and, um, and, uh, ooh. And so um, it was something that she said to me. She said, you know what? Because I had mentioned something about college and, you know, me wanting to graduate with a um, college prep uh, degree track, right? My high school diploma track or whatever. And she said, you know, well, I just don't think that, 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 that you're good enough for that. Like, I don't think that you're good enough to go to college. Like, let's look at what all you got going on now. Like, I just don't think that, 
you're you're going to excel in in that area and at the time <gasps> sometimes i kind of have to laugh through the trauma and through the pain but you know at the time you know i it was almost like i believed her like i wasn't good enough um and and that really did something to me to hear that as a 16 year old it really done something to me which is why you know everything that i do that i lead in i make sure that i'm lead, leading from intentionality like like i'm not speaking negative like word curses or or negative thoughts or things over kids or anybody that i come in contact with and so um that stuck with me and although like you know I, I did go to college. Heck, I'm getting my PhD now. But it it's I owe it to to her <laughs> the for making that comment that really drove me to push myself. Even though like it got hard. Like, you know, I've had kids along the way. I've had been in situations that I shouldn't have been into, right? But I didn't let that stop me because what she said to me when I was 16. You know, now that I'm 32, it's like, you know what? I can't believe you would tell me that I wasn't college material. I wasn't good enough. And it's crazy because I started to believe her that I wasn't good enough, that I hated reading, that I was not going to do that well. God has a funny way of making you laugh because I ended up being a reading teacher. <laughs> <laughs> it's like how they let me up in the but you know whatever it is what it is i joke a lot but you know that story is to say so i said all that to say that you know sometimes your biggest you know um naysayer that may say you can't do something you can't do something that is them speaking their insecurities on you don't allow their insecurities to impact your trajectory of your path don't let it happen because had I listened to her and said, well, you know what? And and I'm not, and this is not to say that like everyone won't go to college, like whatever the case may be, because not everybody wants to go to college, but that was something that I wanted to do, you know? And so, um, and, and so, you know, for me, never let anybody push you to get into that thought process of, well, I'm only able to do what they said I could do. Like I'm only as good enough as she thinks I am. And that was a mindset and an insecurity that she pushed upon me as a 16 year old. 16 year old me didn't understand that. 32 year old me who has some understanding and some knowledge of how psychology plays a part in our lives, in our lives, sorry. <laughs> like, come on, like, what are we doing? Are we leading out of fear or are we leading out of strength? Like, which one is it? So anyway. <laughs> I like my ducks. <laughs> Thanks to my hubby. He's so wonderful. I said that I wanted these and I was like, yep, I definitely want these. And he got them. So y'all, I, I, I am happy for the life that I live. You know, I'm glad that this is a space where we are just going to be, we're going to belong. I would just like to invite y'all to come and share some of your stories. Like you're invited, like who has a story or who has something that similar may have happened to them or maybe someone had told them something that they couldn't do and now they're being a boss at doing it, you know? So I would like to know those stories. So I invite you into this space and on this channel to tell these stories. So anyway, I love y'all. Like, comment, share, and subscribe and see you in the next video. Deuce. <laughs>